from Hollywood, the Jack Benny program, with Jack's guest, Jack Jones. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Well, here I am again, standing in front of millions of viewers, completely relaxed and not a worry in the world. <laughs> now, some critics will attribute this to my years of experience. Others will say it's the temperament of a true artist. <laughs> Personally, I feel that it's nauseating confidence. <laughs> now, my psychology in starting out with a remark like that, you see, is to get you people to dislike me immediately. Then when you realize that you're disliking a nice, harmless, elderly man, this gives you a guilt complex. <laughs> now, this complex leads to sympathy. Sympathy leads to laughter. Laughter leads to applause. And then when the applause is over, you go home and I go to the bank. <laughs> That's when I laugh. <laughs> The reason I never worry about my shows is because when I told my father years ago that I was going to go into show business, he gave me something to wear around my neck. And then he said to me, son, when you're on the stage and the audience isn't laughing, your act is flopping, and things aren't going right, he says, just take it out. <laughs> Just saved my life. <laughs> nah, I'm only kidding. I wouldn't kill myself for a hundred dollars. <laughs> well, I'm not going to talk any longer because I know you'll be very much interested in meeting my guest star, a young fellow who in a very short time has become one of the most popular singers of popular songs and one of our great recording artists, Mr. Jack Jones. It only takes a moment for your eyes to meet and then your heart knows in a moment Just great. Now I know why you sell so many records. Well, thank you, Mr. Benny. Jack, I must ask you something. You know, when you decided to go into show business, how did you happen to pick such a simple name like Jack Jones? That's my real name. I'm sure you know my dad, Alan Jones. 
I not only know Alan Jones, I sold him the donkey he used to serenade. <laughs> Gee, I can't get over little Jackie. Gosh, I remember you years and years ago when you were a kid. You know, I used to, uh, gee, now you're almost as tall as I am. Now, I used, to go, uh, I used to go over to your house years and years ago, every Saturday night. Well, I thought my folks used to go out every Saturday night. They did. I was your babysitter. <laughs> I, uh, I don't understand, Mr. Benny. Uh, I did have a babysitter, but uh, if I remember correctly, it was a little old lady. Well, you see, I used to go to your house right from the studio. I was making Charlie's aunt at the time. <laughs> Gee, I used to tell all the kids that my babysitter was a funny old lady who smoked cigars. <laughs> Years ago, you know. But, Jack, I can't tell you how happy I am with the success you've had, with your wonderful voice and the recordings, you know, your great records. Wives and lovers, lollipops and roses. You know, I made a few records myself with my violin, you know. Oh, sure, I know. Uh, I have your last record. It's a collector's item. It is? Yes, cylinders went out with uh, Thomas Edison. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. I know, I know. <laughs> well, my father always told me that it's always wise to interject a little humor. Oh, your father told you that, huh? Did he also tell you to ask for the top salary when you came on my show? No, I, uh, I did that on my own. Yes. As a matter of fact, I got some very good advice once. I was told that when you're negotiating a deal, never let sentiment or friendship interfere. Always get every dime you can get. And who gave you that advice? That little old lady who used to sit with me. <laughs> a lesson to you babysitters. <laughs> Never open your mouth except to eat the fruit. <laughs> now, now, Jack, before we go into our sketch, you know, this play that we're going to mm. do, I'm sure that our audience would like to hear an encore. What is it going to be? Bewitched. Fine. Wonderful. Beautiful number. I'm wild again, beguiled again, a simpering, whimpering child again, bewitched, bothered, and bewildered, am I? Wouldn't sleep, wouldn't sleep. Love came and told me I shouldn't sleep. Bewitched, bothered, and bewildered. Am I? But what of it? She is cold, I agree. She can laugh, and I love it. Although the laugh's on me, I'll sing to her each spring to her and long for the day when I'll cling to her, bewitched, bothered, and bewildered. Am I? I lost my heart, but what of it? Yeah. 
gentlemen, tonight we pay tribute to those dedicated men and women who have chosen teaching as their profession. Men and women who devote their time and energies to molding the lives of the younger generation. Our uh, scene takes place in the principal office of an old high school in a typical American city. Good morning, Benedict Arnold High School. <laughs> I know, but the school was named before he turned out to be a louse. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's really not my responsibility. If you could possibly call back later on this afternoon... Oh, wait a minute, just a second. I think I hear the principal coming now. Oh, hold on. Good morning, Miss Montgomery. Good morning, sir. Uh, it's Mrs. Bailey on the phone. I knew she'd call. Thank you. Yes, Mrs. Bailey? I'm sorry, but your son was naughty in class last week. I thought it would teach him a lesson if I kept him after school. Well, perhaps I did keep him a bit too long. Goodbye. Bailey, you may go home now. <laughs> a little hard on the Bailey boy? No, I don't. I will not have students showing disrespect. I just want to show you what he carved. Look at this, what he carved on my desk. I hate Principal Bennett. <laughs> the Bailey boy didn't do that. Well, if he didn't, who did? Your wife. <laughs> didn't recognize her handwriting. <laughs> She's got the same thing in needlepoint on our bedspread. <laughs> I'll take it. Yes. Oh, yes, I've got that. Right. Thank you very much. Morning. Morning? Yes. Oh, Mr. Jones, could I talk to you a moment, please? Certainly, sir. Oh, by the way, sir, before I forget it, uh, the student committee has finally chosen a mascot for Benedict Arnold High School. They have? What is it? A chicken with a yellow streak down its back. <laughs> well, that's very appropriate. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you very, very much. Uh, Mr. Jones. Here's what I wanted to talk to you about. Now, how long have you been teaching 11th grade English? About three years, sir. That's right. You've been teaching our students English for three years. Now, take a look at this paper. I just want to show you something. The spelling is atrocious. Coming, C-U-M-M-I-N-G. <laughs> House. H-O-W-S-E. <laughs> this is graceful. Sir, these days, the students don't seem to grasp the fundamentals of phonetic sounding of words, and that hampers them in their spelling. But, Mr. Jones, you wrote this. <laughs> it's your letter asking for a raise. <laughs> Sorry, sir. And you spelled raise, R-A-Z-E. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to give. <laughs> now, Mr. Jones, sit down a minute, will you please? Right over here on this chair. I have something I want to say to you. Now, Mr. Jones, when you came here, I had high hopes for you. You had an excellent record. Excellent. You were a conscientious young man, eager to transfer your knowledge to students who... <laughs> Mr. Jones, I'm talking to you. Mr. Jones, will you pay attention, please? Attention! A-T-E-N-S-H-O-N. Never, never mind. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I dozed off. Mr. Jones, what's the matter with you lately? I guess I'm a little tired, sir. It's the extra work I'm doing. Extra work? Well, sir, I can't quite seem to make out on the salary I'm getting as a teacher, so I had to take on some extra work at night. 
I see. Now, Jones, this extra work you're talking about, I take it... Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Thank you. I'll take care of it right away. Yes, sir. Now, Jones, this extra work you're... <laughs> Jones! <laughs> Jones, this extra work you're talking about, I take it you, you do it after school. Oh, yes, sir. At 3.30 when the bell rings, I have just enough time to put on my rubber boots and rush off to the car wash. <laughs> you work in a car wash? I'm a rear fender man. <laughs> a school teacher with a B.A., an M.A., and a Ph.D. washing a K.A.R. <laughs> I can't get over it. Well, it's only for four hours, sir. At 8 o'clock, I'm a ticket taker in a drive-in movie. <laughs> drive-in movie? But that doesn't let out till 2 o'clock in the morning. I know. Just in time for me to start delivering milk. <laughs> Mr. Jones, you're a teacher. How can you expect to do all these things and still... with your eyes open. I know, that's how I fool my class. <laughs> Mr. Jones, as principal of this school, I can't allow anything to interfere with your teaching. Well, sir, from now on, I can assure you I'll be wide awake. Well, you better be, because I know what's going on in every classroom in this school. And you know how I know? I'll meet you. Now, if 3x plus 4 equals 16, then we know that x equals 4. The algebra class. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. The history class. Vera, I love you, I love you. Don't talk, just kiss me. Whoops. I got the teacher's recreation room. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm 15 minutes late, sir. Well, that's all right, Mr. Wilson. Now, here is Wilson, who is in charge of one of our most important programs, physical fitness. <laughs> now, here's a good example for you, Jones. Here's a man who's been with us eight years, makes the same salary you do. And not only does he sustain himself, but I hear that every day he comes to work in a taxi. I have to. I drive it. <laughs> You drive a taxi? Yes. And Jones, that was a lousy wash job he gave me yesterday. <laughs> Pay your milk bill and you get a better job. <laughs> gentlemen, 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 that's enough. <laughs> Hello? Okay, I've got it. Thank you for calling. Now, Wilson, I'm most annoyed with you. You know, you're already in hot water for stealing the kids' lunches. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Being sorry isn't enough. I just can't believe that my teachers find it necessary to scrounge around for other means of income. Miss Collins, you can't teach a class dressed like that. I got off work late and I didn't have time to change. <laughs> How dare you? I'd have been here sooner, but I hurt my leg when I fell off the runway. <laughs> How can I run a school with everyone working on the side? I can't understand teachers thinking so little of their, of their profession. I mean, so lacking in dedication that they would think more. All right, all right. Quiet... Nobody leaves this room. What? You're under arrest. Arrest? There's my phone. I'll get that. I get the phone. Hello? No, we're not taking any more bets. This bookie joint is closed. <laughs> you, the 
principal of our school a bookie? <laughs> All right. All right, so you found out. Yes, yes, I'm a bookie. I had to do something to make money. What's wrong with me having a side job? I can't eat chalk, you know. <laughs> All right, let's go. Downtown. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to ask you something first. How did you find out? I mean, who, who tipped you off? Mr. Jones. <laughs> Jones? You? You tipped them off? Besides working in a car wash, a drive-in movie, and delivering milk, I'm also an agent for the FBI. <laughs> Come on, let's go. How does he do it? How does one man? Jack will be back with his guest, Jack Jones, in just a moment. And I hope we didn't offend anybody with that play we did. I must admit, we debated a long time before we did the sketch. Because, you know, when you do a show about professional groups, you see, you know, like doctors, lawyers, plumbers, <laughs> they, they all complain. So we knew we were on dangerous ground when we did this sketch tonight about the school. And sure enough, the calls have started to come in. In fact, we've already gotten 10 complaints. Not from teachers, from bookies. <laughs> Actually, only nine of them were complaining about the show. One of them called to remind me to pay up on my election bet. Still, I still can't get over Dewey losing. <laughs> and now I'd like to bring out my guest star, Jack Jones. Tell me, what are your plans for the future? Well, uh, I'm cutting two record albums next week. Uh -huh. And then I'm making a few television appearances. I've got a movie lined up, and I'm doing some nightclub engagements. Say, you're pretty busy, aren't you? Well, if I get any busier, I'll have to uh, cut out my milk route. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. But... That's a joke. I know. <laughs> Your father told you to say that. Well, good night, folks, and we'll be seeing you soon.